Welcome back to the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Our conversation this morning is still on the uh, ongoing strike by the Judici Judicial Staff Union of uh, Nigeria. Uh, of course, uh, they have uh, stated their reasons for embarking on a strike. Uh, we are still joined this morning by Monday Ubani, former Vice President, Nigerian Bar Association, and also just joining us, Mr. Jimo Musa, the National Treasurer of Jusun. Thank you both for joining us and for staying with us this morning. Thank you. Thanks for joining us, Mr. Musa. Thank you very much. Good morning. All right. Good morning. All right. I want to bring you in here. Um, you're the national treasurer of the body. Share with us, you know, exactly what has happened in the last few days, the reasons for the strike, and um, what currently is uh, going on. Thank you very much. Uh, this strike is not a new strike. It's a suspended strike. We just resume it. In 2014-2015, we had this strike. And the government intervened, and we thought they are being honest. We suspended the strike with the intervention of key officers, even the former MBA president, Alege. But after which, nothing happened. All the promises were thrown under the carpet. We tried to link up. We wrote several communications, even to the president himself. And in his magnanimity, he set a committee to look into the autonomy issue and came out with order 10. We expected that order 10 to be carried out and be respected, but the reverse is the case. The governors have become so powerful, they are like king gods, they turn everything upside down. Up till this moment, we've been trying to link up, no way. We have no, nothing to do. The strike is our last hope. So we resume our strike and we are hopeful so we will not call out this strike until the needful is done. Like the last speaker said, he said it all. In fact, I have nothing even to say more than what he has said. People are politicizing a constitutional matter, a constitutional, a governor swore to uphold, even by refusing to comply by that section 1, 2, and sub 3. I think it's a impeachment offense. But I don't know what is happening in this country. We are surprised. So strike, I think, is our last hope. Oh, not, not minding the statement, this is not the right time, COVID-19 and others. We don't think there's any right time to ask for your rights. So what we're doing, we're hopeful and we'll keep faith. And this strike continues until yeah. Iron obey the last order. All right. So what would you expect the government to do to make sure the strike is called off? We expect at least the federal government, through the Minister of Labor, should intervene. This is his field. Should call the parties together to a round table. Why, why is it very difficult to obey a section of the Constitution that somebody swore to uphold? Why is it very difficult? I don't really understand it. Why is it? Uh, so the government are keeping quiet. Well, we don't have any choice than to ground the system. Even though we feel what others feel. They are like the lawyers, we sympathize with them, but they should be in our shoes. I, we expect them to be the one fighting for this just cause because the court is their home. They should make the court a, a conducive place for them to walk in. And we expect that they should be the one at the front line while we follow. But the reverse is the case. Okay, Mr. Musa, uh, I mean... It's it, so unfortunate. Mr. Musa, in specific terms, what would implementation yeah. of this executive order look like? Uh, the implementation means money meant for judiciary financially should be handed over to the head of courts in the state or through NJSC for onward disbursement to the state judiciary. And it will be very tidy. The work, the work and whatever will be free. We don't go cop in hand begging the governors for funds. You see a CJ will go to a governor, stay three, four hours at a waiting room, trying to see the governor just to beg for a fund to do A or B. It's very, it's very, very unfair. So if we comply by this uh, order 10 to, uh, to deduct the money meant for judiciary from the source, it's just an issue that uh, the, 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 the Attorney General of the Federation was the chairman of this committee set up. I, and he came out with a beautiful report. Why can't he now direct the Accountant General to do the needful, deduct this money from source? Then whoever that is not satisfied, let him go to hell or go to court. 
All right. So that we address it. I want to bring back uh, Monday Obani here um, with regards uh, the role of the federal government here. Um, Mr. Musa has just mentioned the Attorney General of the Federation and you know what he uh, you know is expected to do. Um, but Monday Obani, what do you think President Muhammadu Buhari and of course the federal government? In you know, what ways can they enforce Executive Order Ten and ensure that state governors completely uh, comply with that order? Yes. Uh the provision is in the executive order 10. So there's any state breach that every time gets come in any month is probably for the monthly allocation, gets counted in the direction of our government as the general. We, we told the fund that belongs to the judiciary. As such, uh, before the, any money will be added to them. That is what the provision, the provision is there. In other words, they don't need to send the money to the, the state government. They, they would collect it from, from the federal level and then transmit it to the arm of government of the various states. That's how the, the, the provision was. The, the governors, they have been caught, turned down in the So they ran to the, they ran to, uh, they ran to, uh, sorry. I apologize and for they, you know, they discussed. All right. Um, Monday Obani, we'll have to hold on and probably reconnect with you. The sound quality from your end is not very good. Uh, Jim Musa, can you uh, quickly um, respond to that now? Um, in what ways do you think President Mohamed Buhari and, of course, the whole of the federal government can enforce Executive Order 10 on state governors? Uh, you've mentioned, you know, what the Attorney General, um, the Accountant General, I beg your pardon, should do. Uh, with regards yeah. to the funds, but in what ways do you expect that they should ensure that that order is is, um, is uh, taken? It's, it's just an issue of compliance. If the directive is given to Accountant General, they, in fact, we know what is X from, uh, for State A and B. After a budget is passed, approved, we check what is due to the judiciary. You calculate more, yearly, you divide it by 12, Monthly, we know the figure. We have submitted the figure uh, in October. We submitted. We even thought they were going to deduct this money and effect it. Surprisingly, we don't know what happened. The governors went underground. I we don't know what happened. We just kept quiet about it. So, if the government want to be to, uh, want to save the system and save judiciary, they have the power. They have the power to direct the accountant general. They disburse money every twenty fifth or so for fact. He talked what is due to the judiciary, send it to the arm where it belongs. Then anybody that is quarreling it, let him go and seek redress. We should be able to respect some order in this country. It's not that anything that you choose to believe in that you, you do, the one you don't believe in, you will not do it, and you will let people just go stop free with that. Uh, I think uh, we, we have to do better than this. We have to do better. It's very easy, but they are, they are using, we are not playing politics here, please. We are just trying to make things right in this country. When we are talking politics, it's different from when we are trying to make things right. It, it, it's a constitutional issue that is there. Do, do you, do you believe, the, the, um, and I'm, I'm going to be asking now with regards to the ASU strike from last year, it lasted for almost a year. Do you think a strike will be effective in uh, current day Nigeria? Uh, you mean ASU strike? So I'm saying if you, if you look back at the ASU strike and how long that lasted before it was eventually yeah, suspended, yeah. do you think yeah. that the Jusun strike will be effective in Nigeria of today, the way things are? Um, and of course, the government's reaction to, to striking workers. Well, it's difficult the way government behaves. It, it will be difficult, but we are keeping faith and believing to do the needful. Even we will have hitches, we will have challenges, even from our system. It will get to a stage where they will be intimidated to turn back on us, but we are believing this cause is a just cause and we have to fight it on until we, we, I cannot say or lose faith that we cannot make it. I believe in me that it's worth fighting for, it's worth even dying for. Okay. Um, Mr. Obani, can you hear me? Okay, okay. This question goes to you first and then to Mr. Musa. How is this ongoing strike by the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria affecting all the stakeholders involved, from people who have cases in court to the lawyers, judiciary staffs themselves? How is this you know, affecting people? No, it's, it's going to be very adverse. 
very, very advanced. There are those that are expecting judgment to be delivered when the issue of this is up. There are those who are very high intention. Their matters are they're supposed to be assigned. There are those whose uh, application for bail is pending and they have shot it immediately after results. So, and so many other investigations, you know, both of land, contract, and constitutional issues. Now, if this takes place, it will affect the, those cases and affect the litigants. There are those who have been to expect judgment in their favor and all. So, it is it a bad effect. And then for lawyers, you know, there are lawyers who depend on, on their income from as they handle the court. You know, uh, by this particular spot, they will not go to court until they don't have the case on behalf of the client. Okay. You don't expect to. So it will affect, you know, so many of them, you know, litigation costs. All right, Mr. Uh, Obani, we're still, we're still struggling to hear you, unfortunately. We're sorry about that. But well, let's bring in Mr. Mr. Musa here. Mr. Musa, are you still with us? I'm with you. I'm with you. Okay, Mr. Obani just mentioned some of the, you know, effects that this strike would have on stakeholders, you know, people expecting court judgments. But the audio wasn't very clear on that. Could you help us break it down, you know, how the strike would begin to affect lawyers and people and, you know, litigants as well? Well, like he said, rightfully said, it's going to affect lawyers because their they are daily this thing is going to court and they make their daily income there. It's going to affect litigants that want expect judgment from the court. It's going to affect people that are reminded in prison and their fate is not determined and the court is on strike. That means they are going to stay a longer time there before their matter is being heard. And it's going to affect those, there are those that goes to court just to delay some processes. So they will be happy. They, they take advantage of this strike. They will even pray the strike was not called out. So it has different effects. But the essence of strike is to affect people, to touch people. We, 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 we feel it. But yes, that is the essence of strike. So that you touch people, people will all rise up and say the needful should be done. Well, let's do the right thing. By the time it affects the lawyers so badly, I think they will be forced to join forth with us and do the right thing. They know that this cause is genuine, but because of politics, they don't want to join. I don't know what they, I don't know what they benefit in politics. When you are a lawyer practicing on your own, or you should be seen to be doing the right thing, not minding whoever complains about you. Right. I, also, I also want your thoughts on uh, the Nigerian Bar Association once again. Uh, the uh, president, uh, Ulumidi Akbata, has said that he I, I does that. support the uh, idea of a strike, you know, but the timing is wrong. Um, so I want you, you know, do, do you think you're getting adequate support from the NBA at a time like this? And what stance would you rather have the NBA take? Uh, why, why, why you say the they are supporting the strike and the timing is wrong? I don't even know whether we have a proper timing for a strike. Do we have a particular time that one should ask for his rights? What timing? I, I, that, that timing is political. Uh, this, let, let, let's go to the real thing. Is the strike genuine? Is it worth fighting for? Yeah, let's join forces and fight it. What, what, what timing? What be, if you say COVID-19? Yeah, okay, COVID-19 even says why that we stay at home. So it's even better for us to just stay at home, lock up the whole court and say we, we, we lean on COVID-19. So let's not bring political issues that the timing is wrong, the timing is not Put that aside. Even the timing is wrong or it's not wrong, are we fighting a just cause? If yes, let's join hands together and make it right. Then later we'll talk about timing. And if they've been interfering, uh, discussing with us for a very long time, we would have, they would have bring all this suggestion of timing and maybe would have considered it. But uh, since the insertion of this national president, we've written letters congratulating him, sending him our documents, our demands. Nobody cares to even... Uh, call us or invite us to even hear from us until when we embark on, when we, when we embark on strike. Now somebody is telling us the timing is strong. I don't see it as, a, as an excuse. So, so you don't, think, you don't think the Nigerian Bar Association currently supports you as much as uh, you would have liked? They, they claim they are supporting us, but not as much as we expected from them. Because 
we should be, we should be leaning by, behind them to fight for this cause because the judiciary is their home. The judiciary is, is their home. We are just supporting staffs. We work with the tell with the day. They even come into the judiciary and become inventors. They become judges and other things. So they actually they should make right. that place a working a working a decent place to work for. With. All right. Hopefully because they've not been giving us that support. Hopefully they only say they are with us. They are with us. Yeah. And that is all. Hopefully we, we have a clearer feedback, feedback from um, uh, from Monday Obani now. Uh, you're a former vice president, Nigerian Bar Association. So I want to put you on the spot here yeah. and ask you how you think it should have been handled. You already uh, already mentioned that uh, Olumide Akpata's statement was, you know, being politically correct. But, you know, while you were vice president of the Nigerian Bar Association, if this came up in your time, how do you think the Nigerian Bar Association should, you know, what steps and what position do you think they should be taking here? The, the, the Nigerian Bar Association have always insisted on the independence of the judiciary. In fact, it's our, it's our central team. And every conference we have ever held you know, as, a, as a body, we have always insisted on the independence of the judiciary. And the leadership have always been in, in support. Even this particular statement that the president issued, if you will watch him, he say, I am totally in support of the autonomy of the, of the judiciary. Yeah, he was only looking at the issue of timing, which I also said, there is no time for you to fight for a right. <laughs> there is no timeline. You fight for a right at any point in time. Uh, so we are totally behind independence of judiciary. And we have always uh, said it. We have always mounted it. And we have always also practically supported it. I've, I've, I have been the one, you know, if you watch my videos on television, I've been raising this issue of, you know, governors, you know, that's giving cars and their houses to, to judges. I have always condemned that that is absolute nonsense. It's not good. It's not good at all. That is not what they're supposed to do. Give them their money. Let them determine what they want to use their money for. It's not for you to go and buy cars and then call the press and begin to make a make them look like as if they are beggars, you know. Or you are using your money for it. So but, that have always been our position in the NBA. But Mr. So, Obani, even even regarding you know what you just mentioned about governors buying cars and giving to you know lawyers and judges. Do you think this in any way basically affects, you know, the judgment that these lawyers dispense when the state is a, you know, party? <laughs> it goes without saying, <laughs> who pays the piper? If a judge gives you a house, you know, and give you a car, an SUV, the latest SUV, so you now want to be bold enough to give judgment against him, it will, you know, you know, he will want you to, to pander towards his interest, you know, say, look, Look at me, I'm the one that is here. I'm the one that gives you what you desire. So don't ever go against In fact, some, some governors always make it clear to them that they need to toe the line of, uh, of, of their whim and, and car prices. No, they don't want anything that goes against them and all that. So I think, I think that the judges themselves must stand, there, stand up and also exist on their Even though they, they don't speak out, they don't agitate, but most of the times, I think that they also must speak out and say, look, you don't forget giving us these cars, giving us these houses and all that. Give us this money so that we determine how we can use it. Either we want to buy houses or you want to buy cars or okay. even want to develop the basic infrastructures, you know, for easy dispensation of justice. I think that is the way to go. Lawyers have always been supportive. It's not true that we have not been supporting this cause. We have always insisted on independence of the judiciary okay. because only when we have an independent judiciary, that Nigeria can be a better country. It will be for the litigants, it will be for the economy, it will be for the leaders themselves. Everyone will enjoy a country where there is independence of judiciary. All right, Mr. Obani. Last question to you, Mr. Musa. Uh, we saw that the uh, chairman, House Committee on Judiciary, Honorable Onofuk Luke of the House of Representatives, basically appealed to you, appealed to the union, to shelve ideas of the strike and give the committee time to speak with the government, you know, so they can find a way forward. Would you be considering, you know, his words? Hmm, truly, I'll tell you, no. Uh, that statement was made on air. We have not met with him. We have not discussed. We have not seen the honesty in the speech. So why should we just, somebody just come on air and tell us, Share the this and we'll do this. So I don't think, I don't think, we're, we're not considering that. I don't consider until the needful is done, until we come to the round table and discuss. Then we'll now think of shelling the strike and we'll continue discussion. We have not even come to table with the people we are discussing these issues with. Nobody has shown concern yet until we're on the round table. 
and we see the genuity, then we now know what to do. But we just we just embark on strike yesterday, and somebody is there uh, on scene, just uh, granting interview, telling people that we should share the strike. We'll continue. How, how do we trust that if we share the strike based on hearing issues on t uh, telly or news, he will even listen to us anymore? Okay. I expect that if you are really serious, we invite parties and we start discussion. We have not even commenced discussion. And somebody said you should share the strike, you should suspend the strike. I, I, I don't see honesty in that. All right. Okay. Um, Jimo Musa, mm. National Treasurer yes, of uh, Jusun, and of course, yes. uh, Monday Obani, former Vice President, Nigerian Bar Association. Thank you both for speaking with us this thank morning. Thank you. And uh, with uh, more thank developments you. concerning thank this thank strike, you very much. we would like to speak with you again. Thank you once again. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right. If you remember also in 2020, the 4th of August, the River State Governor did give 41 Range Rover SUVs to judges in the state. Um, and that also did create, you know, conversations concerning the independence of the judiciary and, um, you know, whose money really is, you know, buying those SUVs. It's like someone how... using your money to bribe you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Still another conversation about strike coming up after the break.